12.05 in the afternoon right now on 90.3 FM. You're listening to Helping Seniors of Brevard for this Wednesday afternoon. I'm John Harper. Let's get the show underway. Right now, here's Nancy Deardorff. Hey, good morning, John Harper. And good morning to you. Thank you, and good morning to our listeners. Good afternoon. Good, yes, good afternoon, actually. I'm Nancy Deardorff. I'm the Operations Director and Senior Care Navigator for Helping Seniors of Brevard. And today I have the privilege of sitting in for our uh, normal host, Executive Director Dr. Carrie Fink. Uh, and we have a great show for you today. We're going to be talking about paying for senior living. So I'm very excited. I have three wonderful guests in the studio with me today. The first guest that I have is Katie Jackson Stoltz attorney with the law office of Amy B. Van Fossen, a longtime supporter and sponsor of Helping Seniors of Brevard. Good morning, Katie. Good morning, Nancy. It's so great to be here. Thank you. I'm glad you could join us. And we really look forward to the information you have to impart to our listeners. Um, The second and third folks that we have joining us today is Holly Fincher. She is the director of sales and marketing with Hibiscus Court, also a longtime supporter and sponsor of Helping Seniors of Brevard, almost from the beginning, Holly. And joining us today in my first time meeting him is Joseph Wise Brown, the new executive director at Helping Seniors of Brevard. It's so nice to meet you. Thank you both for joining us. Thanks for having us. Thank you, Nancy. Absolutely. Um, What a privilege. So before I get to our guests and our topic, Paying for Senior Living, I wanted to talk a little bit about our Helping Seniors Car Fundraiser, which we have every year. We're in our seventh year. And this is where your donation out there uh, for $25 gets you one ticket, or we have a bundle of five tickets uh, for $100. And each ticket gives you a chance to win one of five cars. We normally have four, but this year we have five cars, and that includes the 2023 Dodge Challenger, the 2023 Chevrolet Camaro, the 2023 Kia Sportage, 2023 Mazda Miata, and new this year, a fifth car, is the 2023 Mitsubishi Outlander. And so your donation of $25 for one ticket, or again, a bundle of uh, a, a bundle of five tickets for one hundred dollars, not only gets you a chance to win the car on the night of our grand drawing event, which, by the way, folks, is uh, Saturday, October seventh, from six to nine p.m., but it also uh, gives you entry into the American Muscle Car Museum, which is the venue uh, where we have our grand drawing. And I have to say, uh, our thanks to A.J. Hires, who always offers up five cars from each of his dealerships. Uh, And again, the winner picks the car. Also, thank you to Mark Pylock. He is the owner of um, the American Muscle Car Museum, and we appreciate his generosity. This is the beautiful venue we have for our grand drawing event. Did you know that the American Muscle Car Museum right here in Melbourne, right here in Brevard, is the largest private collection of American muscle cars and other cars and memorabilia in North America? That's pretty amazing. We have that resource right here. So it's a fun night, again, that Saturday, October 7th from 6 to 9 p.m. And I always say that there are no losers because Helping Seniors is a nonprofit dedicated to providing information, education, advocacy, and resources to our seniors with a mission to improve the quality of life of seniors in Brevard and beyond. We depend on sponsors and donors, uh, and 100% of all donations stay right here in Brevard County. Uh, So how can you get tickets? Well, you can get tickets at any Boniface Hires car dealerships, You can also call us at Helping Seniors of Brevard. Reach out to us at 321-473-7770. I'll repeat that later in the show. Or you can go to our website at helpingseniorscarraffle.com. And again, the reason I say there's no losers is because even if you don't win the car, 
you get entry into the American Muscle Car Museum, which is not open to the public. Mark Pylock opens it up only for special events for nonprofits like us. It is a sight to be seen. It's it's amazing. He has over 400 cars plus memorabilia. And the night of the event, Mark also puts up uh, free beer, wine, sandwiches. So it's And it's fun for the whole family. It's an event, whether you're single, on a date night, or with your children. It's such a fun night. Um, and the reason I say there's no losers is because you get to get in that venue, although I will point out you do not need to be present to win. But I don't know why you wouldn't want to be because uh, it, it is just such a wonderful uh, evening uh, full of fun. No losers because your ticket, when you get a ticket, it's a donation that helps us at Helping Seniors of Brevard. And we depend on our business sponsors and private donations to survive. It is you uh, are the reason that we exist. And we do important work here trying to spread the word. We provide information, education, advocacy, resources, and referrals to senior. Consider us sort of like your personal GPS. You don't know, how do you, I always say, how do you know what you don't know? Well, you don't. So give us a call and we can help navigate you towards senior services that can help you because we want to help seniors live a better life. So with that said, I'd like to get back uh, to our wonderful guests and I'd like to open it up with uh, Holly Fincher and Joseph Wise Brown, whoever wants to talk first, because before we talk about paying for senior living, I wanted you, if if you guys can talk about what assisted living is and is not, and the many benefits uh, that assisted living can offer our seniors. So Holly, Joseph, whoever wants to open up. Thank you, Nancy. Um, Yes, so assisted living is actually actually great. Um, A lot of people who transition into assisted living are very hesitant and they're not quite sure about it. But once they get in there, 95% of people do so much better after they get in there. They're having to walk to the meals, they're having to walk to activities, they're having to engage with other, you know, residents and community. Um, So that gets them out of their room, it gets them more sociable, it gets them from sitting in front of the TV all day long. So it's actually a lot of people flourish once they get into assisted livings. Um, You're not tied in. You're not tied down. It's your own apartment. You can come and go as you please. You can have your own car. You can still do your own medications. Like a lot of our rooms, you have your own little kitchenette. Um, But then again, all your meals are provided. We can help with your medications. We can be that second set of eyes and the hands-on assistance that your loved one needs as they start to age and need more assistance. Awesome. Joseph? If I can piggyback on what um, Holly just said, uh, uh, you know, we have a ton of assistant living communities throughout. Um, We are not about the bricks and the mortar. We are about the care. Um, Me passionately, I've been doing this for the last 18 years. And doing it for 18 years, I can tell you I've seen it all. Um, My passion came from this by um, studying assistant living with a friend of mine that I was doing hotel indus- um, hotel hospitality. And we wanted to bring hospitality into senior housing. And um, I started 18 years ago as a consultant, and now um, I've ran about uh, 23 communities in 13 states. Um, I've seen it all. Uh, again, it's not about the bricks and mortar new communities pops up, it has to be the care. It has to be that it's coming from the heart and the nurture that when we bring your loved one in, know that we are here to take care of your loved one. Um, Hibiscus Coat is special. And each and every one that are part of that team are special when your family members arrive to that community. So... um, So what I'm hearing, Joseph, is that the assisted living community that someone chooses to live in, and in this case, Hibiscus Court, is all about a sense of family. Family it is. I highly can piggyback on it. Family uh, and friends. Yes, definitely. Well, thank you so much for that. Now, um, I do want to ask you you guys some questions because, you know, on our Helping Seniors call line, we get a lot of calls for 
various reasons, whether it's legal, health care, household, uh, senior living options. And one of the things uh, that I get a call about a lot of times are seniors that are confused between long-term care or a skilled nursing facility and assisted living. And they sort of think it's one and the same. Uh, Holly or Joseph, uh, take it away. What's the difference between long-term care and assisted living? Some of those things I touched on a little bit, Nancy. When you're in skilled nursing, long-term care, um, you're there's no in and out. You're, you have your room, you have your care. I mean, family can come still visit, things like that, but you don't have the access to go in and out as you please. So like at an assisted living, it's more considered your apartment. You can come and go as you please. You can manage your own um, activities. You can be part of the activities we offer. We have numerous events that we take you to. We go in and out to the library, which is across the street from us. A couple of weeks ago, we went to the Melbourne Auditorium and took the residents to a couple of the concerts over there. So keeping them engaged, keeping them in and out of the community, keeping them moving as long as possible just to prevent that decline. That's so awesome that you should say that. And of course, uh, having spent 33 years as a registered nurse, I understand the difference, but the general populace does not really. And I'm curious, and any one of you can ch chime in, um, have you recently read the Surgeon General's advisory on the fact that loneliness and isolation are now a public epidemic? Any, anyone want to comment on that? I, I haven't read that, Nancy. That's very interesting. I could imagine how that not only uh, ties into the elderly, but also children um, and all different people. Was the study geared towards just the elderly or just people in general? No, uh, adults. Adults. Uh, yeah. Okay. So it wasn't just seniors. It was adults in general. And uh, to our listeners, please look out for my article in the July edition of Senior Scene Magazine regarding the Surgeon General's new advisory on loneliness and isolation being a public health uh, problem, in an epidemic really in the United States. And the beautiful thing about assisted living is that it can help combat that because you're not alone. More and more seniors are facing a problem, not only financially, but also with transportation. Maybe you cannot drive anymore. And so Holly and Joseph, correct me if I'm wrong, one of the amenities, not every, but most, many assisted living facilities offer transportation, just like you were saying, to the library and social events. Can you expand on that? Yes, definitely. Um, we provide transportation to um, outings, uh, activities. Uh, actually, we just went to the uh, theater across the street um, just last week. Um, I want to touch on one thing. Most assistant living, once you move the residence in, you know, that's it. Family, you know, we will hear from them three months down the road. We, we have um, implemented a, not only, a, a, it's, a, it's part of the family for the residents and their family. So we created what we call the captain's dinner. Oh. So the captain's dinner, um, on the last Thursday of every month, we will have the new residents that just moved in with their family, have dinner with the management team and myself, the executive director, and we probe as far as um, what they've done in their, their, their previous um, stay. Uh, and um, we actually participated ourselves because they want to know who's taking care of the family. Sure, and who's absolutely. Care of them. So that's one thing that I I know that we stand out from the other assisted living facilities. I love that. Um, Did you implement that, Joseph? Pretty much. All right. Congrats. I love ex, it. I'm an ex-Navy guy, so I'm Catholic. <laughs> oh, so is our president and founder. Did you know that? Pardon me? Our president and founder, Joseph Steckler, is a retired U.S. Navy captain and former commander of a submarine. So go Navy. I'm Navy uh, lieutenant. You're, you're, you're his new best friend. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much. So um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was the fact that many folks look at, you know, the cost of assisted care in assisted living can be expensive at face value. And many people think 
you need to be rich to live there. And that's just not the case. There are other resources out there. But when callers call our senior helpline and they talk about needing care in an assisted or considering living in an assisted living, they'll tell me, oh, but it's so expensive. But what I say to them is you're looking at it as a rent or a mortgage, but it's so much more than that. Uh, because it really takes away every single worry that a senior would have if living in their own home. You never need a new roof. You never need to replace that hot water heater. You may or may not have a mortgage that covers that. You have a personal cook. You have someone to uh, provide you and assist you with medications, which are delivered, correct? And uh, they have uh, physicians, nurse practitioners that come into the building. So talk a little bit in detail, if you will, about the amenities that are offered so that I help me help our listeners understand that it's not rent. The cost for assisted living per month is not rent. It's so much more than that. That's right, Nancy. A lot of the things you have touched on a little bit already. Um, it is not a mortgage. Um, it is seems more pricey than your home mortgage would be, but it also includes your 24-hour care. It includes our in-house doctors that will check on you weekly. It includes our med techs who will deliver your meds to you. We transport you to all your activities and doctor's appointments. Um, we do your laundry, your housekeeping. We make all your meals for you. We'll wait till you meet our new chef, Gifford. He's amazing. His first dish for me was shrimp Alfredo, and it was to die for. Yum. It almost sounds like um, someone uh, getting the royal treatment, if you will. Absolutely. And if you can come in and you know, speak with any of our residents, any of our team, you'll see they are truly are happy. I have one resident that we speak to regularly because she points out exactly that. I don't have to cook. I don't have to clean. And I don't even have to make my own bed if I don't want to. <laughs> exactly. Well, and I, you know, I love the fact um, that there's so many amenities that go with assisted living to where it really leaves the senior carefree from anything else in life. And not only that, the children can go back to being their children. We're going to take care of the hard part. We're going to take care of the difficult decline. We're going to take care of the memory conflicts. We're going to take care of everything for you so you can come and enjoy time with your family member without having to be their caregiver. I absolutely love that you just said that, Holly. And the reason is because uh, my father, who's passed on now, I was a caregiver for him for years. And I became his caregiver. I was the Nancy, the nurse. And when I got assistance for him, then I could go back to being his daughter and just enjoying him as my father. Uh, you know, I had the skills uh, that it took to help change him and all those technical things, but no parent or child should really have to go through that and cross that barrier, if you know what I mean. So it's such a wonderful option, um, and it's important. So uh, Katie and Joseph, if uh, somebody was interested in Hibiscus Court, do you give free tours? Most definitely. Um, actually, we have uh, uh, corporate sales and marketing okay. at the property right now because we don't want to miss a tour. So she's there in case there's a tour come in while we are absent. Wonderful. So, so Do they have to schedule an appointment or can they just no, walk they in? No, they can just walk in. We can walk in. Okay, so a family, a senior and or their family looking to explore senior living options can just come in and say, hey, we want a tour. And, and, you know, I, I have to say that um, I am so blessed to have Holly with me because Holly has been training each and every staff member to do a tour. That's unusual. It's unusual and it's important. It's very much Yeah, because so. I've worked in that environment and you don't want to leave a family sitting there for 30 minutes, you know, waiting. And, and I want to I say one thing before uh, I almost, almost skip my mind. Uh, I want to say congratulations to all of the, uh, the nurses and the assistant um, CNAs. Um, this week is CNAs week. So Thank um, you. I want to say congratulations. Well job, uh, job well done. And they continue to, to uh, provide the care for our seniors. And, um, you know. Thank you, Joseph, for saying that. So it's National uh, Certified Nursing Assistant Week, and it, it's a profession, and I call it a profession. 
uh, that often is um, so. underappreciated, mm -hmm. and they're the backbone of our healthcare system. Yes. You know, these are the people that work hard to provide not only the physical care, but uh, the mental and emotional support that our our seniors need. So I'm I'm right there with you. Thank you. Thank you. So if somebody wanted to schedule a tour, I mean, maybe they want to pop by, uh, could one of you give uh, me not only your address, but your phone number if somebody wanted to reach Hibiscus Court? Absolutely. You can reach us at 321-951-1050. We are on Hibiscus Boulevard. It's 540 East Hibiscus Boulevard in Melbourne, Florida. You can see the Melbourne Library from out some of our windows. Um, Holmes Regional Hospital is right in our back corner. It's a great location. Lots of great doctors in the area for ease of getting to your appointments. So come check us out. We'd be happy to have you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it, Holly. And again, you have on-site physician or nurse practitioner visits. So someone doesn't have to leave the community if they don't want to, but they have the freedom to leave the community if they want to. Correct. They have the option of selecting one of our in-house doctors for ease and for the more frequent check-ins once a week, or they can keep their regular primary care physician and we'll transport you to those appointments if that's what you feel more comfortable with. Okay. And so uh, that, you know, that's another reason, folks, to consider assisted living. It's not just your medications, a place to live, never having to worry about a new roof, uh, property insurance, but you get your transportation, you got a personal cook. It really is the royal treatment, uh, I say again. Um, so thank you so much. Um, I want to shift gears here, and, but I, I also want us to continue to have a conversation because for our listeners, um, I want to bring up next Katie Jackson Stoltz with the Law Office of Amy uh, B. Van Fossen to talk about uh, who's a longtime supporter, as is Hibiscus Court of Helping Seniors of Brevard. We couldn't do it without you guys, so thank you so much. Thank um, you. So, uh, Katie, I want to turn it over to you to let's start talking about, and we're, we're going to be coming up on a break soon, but let's start the conversation about how you pay for senior living. And for those of you who haven't got your copy or read it yet, Katie has a wonderful article in Senior Scene Magazine, June edition, uh, if you can't find it, give me a call at Helping Seniors of Brevard, 321-473-7770. I can tell you where to locate a Senior Seed magazine. It is the end of June, so they're probably supply is running low, but they're also available online, and I can connect you. So I highly encourage you to read uh, Katie's article. So turning it over to you, Katie, Jackson, Stoltz, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, Nancy. Um, so I'm Katie Jackson Stoltz. I'm a lawyer with the law office of Amy Van Fossen, as you said. So we do elder law at our law firm. So um, that encompasses VA benefits or Medicaid benefits, estate planning, which is a will or a trust. Uh, powers of attorney, healthcare surrogates, which are two very important documents. We also do probate and trust administration. So that's if someone were to um, pass away and they kind of have to go through the court system to get the assets. And we do guardianship. So we kind of do uh, a lot of the stuff you guys do on the legal side. Well, we, we don't do any of that. We really, <laughs> well, really <laughs> what we do is we, we refer to you. <laughs> Our job... Our job is to uh, basically provide you as a resource, which we do all the time. And I've gotten feedback from the people that we give referrals to, and they're oh so thankful for uh, the law office of A.B. B. Van Fossen. And folks, these people will lead you in the right direction. Um, for the most part, uh, Katie, correct me if I'm wrong, you guys provide free consultations, correct? Correct. And a lot of our, I guess, clients overlap, I should say. Okay. Well, we are coming up on a break with Helping Seniors of Brevard. There will be more exciting conversation, important conversation, coming up after the break on Helping Seniors Radio at WEJF 90.3 FM. 12.34 right now in the afternoon here on this Wednesday. It's Helping Seniors of Brevard. I'm John Harper. Let's get back to more of the program as we introduce Nancy Deardor to you. Hi, Nancy. Hi, John. Thank you again. I have the privilege of sitting in as host 
uh, for Dr. Carrie Fink, our Executive Director with Helping Seniors of Brevard. Hopefully I'm doing him justice and helping seniors of Brevard and our guests justice. Um, so today, again, I have some wonderful guests, uh, Katie Jackson Stoltz, attorney with the law office of Amy B. Van Fossett, Holly Fincher, director of sales and marketing with Hibiscus Court, and Joseph Wise Brown, executive director with Hibiscus Court. So we just got done talking about what assisted living is and isn't, uh, how it separates from long-term care, the many benefits uh, and that was a, just a wonderful uh, conversation that we had because it really is something that seniors should consider as as we all age. I mean, we always say at Helping Seniors of Brevard, you either are a senior, going to be a senior, or you know a senior. And our goal with Helping Seniors of Brevard is to look out for our community seniors because they always say it takes a village for a child, but it does for our seniors as well. And we honestly believe that. At Helping Seniors of Brevard, we provide information, education, advocacy, resource, as, and referral uh, to seniors and their families with a goal of a mission of trying to improve the quality of life, lives of Brevard County citizens and, and beyond. Quite frankly, we get calls. I had a call from Arizona the other day. Uh, we'll try to help anyone. As, as you know, our, our resources uh, expertise is, is primarily in Brevard, uh, but uh, I can be your Google. We have a lot of seniors out there that aren't tech savvy. I can be your Google. Uh, I can do your web search for you. And we take calls on our senior information line. Uh, we can be reached at 321-473-7770. No question is off limits. I will say uh, we're not an urgent hotline. Uh, we're not a hotline at all. We're an information line. Uh, if you go to voicemail when you call us, it usually means we're out at a community event or our phone lines sometimes get very busy. But if you leave me a voicemail, I will always call you back and try to lead you and steer you in the right direction. So that's our goal at Helping Seniors of Brevard, and we are Brevard County's nonprofit for those services, and we depend on you, the public, through whether it's our car raffle fundraiser, private donations, or sponsorships by the many wonderful business and organizations that support us. It is you who support us and allow us to continue our mission. So if you're interested in donating, you can go to our website, or you can give us a call. Again, our phone number at Helping Seniors of Brevard is 321-473-7770. I would be remiss if I did not mention our new Senior Resource Center of Brevard. Uh, we're very excited about that. Um, we are located at 1344 South Apollo Boulevard in the Omni Professional Tower and we're in Suite 2C. Dr. Craig DeLigdish has offered us, donated to us, 5,500 square feet. So we don't need that much space. We have a little office in there to meet with pe people, and then we have resident sponsors that also are inside the building with us. We have home health care. We have an insurance Medicare specialist, occupational therapy, a real estate specialist, Canadian meds is in there. The list goes on. And our resources are not just limited to the uh, resident sponsors. We also, uh, we're, we're still, uh, I guess they'd say work in progress, developing our senior resource library. So if you know of anyone or you have a business or organization that can help people and you're interested in more information about becoming a sponsor or part of our senior resource library, please feel free to give me a call at Helping Seniors of Brevard, 321-473-7770. So we started a great discussion with Katie Jackson Stoltz, attorney with the law office of Amy B. Van Fossen. And we're going to switch over to now what really we highlighted as our topic today, which is paying for senior living. So Katie, I'm going to turn it over to you. It sounds complicated, and I loved your article in our June edition. Uh, tell us about how can someone possibly pay for assisted living? Thank you, Nancy. So some, some a way that people can pay for senior living 
um, is if if they happen to be a veteran would be through this VA benefit called aid in attendance. So it can be the veteran or the surviving spouse of the veteran, but it's a really lovely benefit. Um, Joseph, I'm sure you've heard of this benefit being a veteran yourself, um, but it's, it's a tax-free benefit. It gets direct deposited to the veteran or the spouse. Of course, there are requirements to obtain this benefit, um, but especially when someone's at assisted living, it's something that when I have a client and they're at assisted living or that's something that is in their near future, I always want to know if they're a veteran, if they're their surviving spouse of a uh, veteran, and then I look into the requirements of that aid and attendance benefit to see if I can get that family, that tax-free uh, money that, again, is direct deposited. They can use that money to help pay for assisted living. So the beauty of that benefit is I have a lot of people that are at home. Um, and they think, I just can't afford to make that jump into assisted living. And so once we see if they're eligible for the aid and attendance benefit, it's that money that comes in monthly that makes them feel confident that they can make that leap. So it's a really lovely um, benefit if you meet the requirements. And, and, uh, and it's very generous, generous. It, that's uh, good to know, Joseph. And, and, and Katie, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I know based on the calls that we take at Helping Seniors of Brevard Information Line, there are a lot of veterans themselves and or spouses that have no idea of the benefits that they have uh, by being a veteran. They've just never looked into it. Absolutely. And so... Um as I'm a VA accredited attorney, Amy is Tyler. So we have a lot of VA accredited attorneys in our office. There's also lovely VA field offices around the state and the country. Um, but I have had many individuals who they already go to the VA clinic or the VA hospital. They might even have family members who are nurses with the VA and they have never heard of this aid and attendance benefit. Even myself trying to research it, um, it's hard to dig up information on it unless you're searching in the right spot. So there's a lot out there on VA disability. So like, Camp Lejeune or Agent Orange, claim, Agent Orange claims, um, but there's not that much to really get you streamlined to hi find out helpful information about aid and attendance. Katie, I would say real quick, just one of the questions I always get is, I don't have a disability, so I don't qualify. Yes. So aid and attendance is more, uh, it's it's not based on uh, a service-connected injury that you may have needed, like with disability. So it needs it has to do with needing help with activities of daily living. So if you have a walker, for example, or a wheelchair that helps you with um, ambulating, being at an assisted living, you can also argue provides a custodial environment. And so that's something um, that helps you obtain the aid and attendance benefit, but it's not based on um, necessarily a disability or a disability that you even obtained from your service. Um, and so that is another misconception. Thanks for pointing that out, Holly. Well, and I have a question. Um, I'm the daughter of, uh, uh, my father's passed away now, but a United States Army veteran. Um, is there a stipulation of how long you have to, I mean, you said it doesn't have to do with service connected. You're the expert, not me. Somehow, <laughs> somehow I navigated this by myself years ago when I needed to get him some benefits. But if someone was in for a short period, do they have to be retired military? So they had to have been in for at least 90 days consecutive active duty with at least one day during a covered wartime period. So your covered wartime period is going to be Korea, Vietnam, um, World War II, which I I do have some surviving spouses of World War II vets that I've applied for recently. Um, and then I think the Gulf War is in there as well, but mine are largely Vietnam and Korea vets or their spouses. Okay. Yeah. So what are some other ways that someone could afford assisted living? So in, in Florida, it, it can be, um, if you're not a veteran, the other benefit that is available, although it's very difficult to get in a assisted living facility is a Medicaid benefit. And so, um, again, it's difficult to get, there's ways to get it. And I can certainly expand on that, but it's not something that you can apply for in, in the majority of cases, like you can, if you are a veteran for aid and attendance. Um, but there are ways to get this Medicaid benefit at an assisted living, um, hibiscus court. I've asked Holly and Joseph is somewhere that you could be receiving Medicaid. Um, and, uh, that's something that helps reduce your monthly rent, if you will, which we know from this conversation, it's much more than rent that you are receiving. Right. Um, but that's, that's the other benefit available. So if you're not a veteran or the surviving spouse of a wartime veteran, you can try and obtain um, Florida Medicaid to help bring down those costs of assisted living. Well, and I would be remiss, Katie, if I didn't bring up the fact that I get a lot of calls from callers that say, well, I have Medicaid. 
but it's not the kind of Medicaid they need because there's different types of Medicaid, which your article so wisely points out. But they're like, but but I have it. And then I'm left to explain that. Now, I'm no med- I'm not an attorney. I, I'm no Medicaid expert. Could you possibly kind of dive into the different types of Medicaid and the Medicaid we're talking about when it comes to assisted living. Absolutely. So I don't even, I'm not even familiar with all the types of Medicaid, but there, and a lot of people, they know they have Medicare because their social security statement every year says they're getting out one, it was 170.10 last year for their Part B. I think it's 164.90 is deducted from their social security security every month. So they're really familiar with Medicare. Um, Medicaid and the type that I'm talking about during this radio show, there's ICP Medicaid, that's your nursing home Medicaid, and then there's HCBC Medicaid, that's your assisted living Medicaid. So these types of Medicaid are available to um, seniors, or you can be a little bit younger if you are a truly disabled person, Um, but there are certain requirements for these these type, and they're usually 65 or older, that you're getting this type of um, nursing home or assisted living Medicaid. So in the Florida Medicaid manual, there's all different types of Medicaid. So there's Medicaid for people that have lower incomes that are different ages. Children can have Medicaid benefits, but the type I'm talking about would be uh, ICP or HCBC, which are more geared towards the elderly. Well, and your article mentions one of the most common misconceptions is that a family needs to spend down all of their assets to qualify for Medicaid. Can you talk to that? Oh, absolutely. So I cringe if someone ever calls and says, well, I talked to so-and-so two years ago. They said, the only way I can qualify is if I sell dad's house, spend all the money, uh, and then he has nothing left to apply for Medicaid. So that's simply not true. If you ask any elder law attorney in Florida, they will also cringe at that because Florida is a very generous state in terms of qualifying for Medicaid. We have so many tools that are in our Medicaid manual that we can use to um, preserve assets um, or utilize them in various ways and still qualify someone for Medicaid. Every penny that would ever be moved, we show it on the application. It's the rules in Florida. And so you, it's simply not true that you have to spend down to qualify. There are so many tools to get someone eligible without just paying out of pocket until they have absolutely nothing left. Thanks for that, Katie, because I do get calls like that all the time and people say, I make too much money or I have too many assets to afford it. And I do refer them to you. Um, I mean, personally, I think anybody that is a senior or approaching seniorhood should have their own personal uh, elder care attorney. Uh, it's so imp- There's so many things people don't understand, including myself. I, I learned a lot from elder care attorneys, which allows me to pass that information on to my callers. Um, so it, it, it's good to know. Um, so what you're saying is there are assisted livings out there that accept Medicaid. Yes, yes. absolutely. There's quite a few in the area that accept Medicaid. Not all do, um, but as we said, Hibiscus Core is one of them. Um, so a question for our panel in general, if someone is not qualified yet but will qualify for the type of Medicaid that takes to live in an assisted living. Do assisted livings look at that person and say, we know Medicaid is pending and are there assisted livings out there that will accept that person pending Medicaid or is that more difficult route? You have, you have assisted living um, communities that will accept them pending Okay. Uh, it depends on, on, on the assistant living facility. Right. We actually would provide, um, prefer the coming in private pay. Right. Until the Medicaid um, actually activates. Um, Medicaid that we are talking about is pretty much, it's called the diversion plan. Right. Um, diversion plan is it's pretty much what the state would provide for each resident, and it's a certain amount, depending on what program that you pick. It's about six programs out there right now. Um, One pairs more than the others, but um, all in all, it provides the same service. So if someone has um, some money, but say not enough money to sustain their stay at an assisted living, you prefer them to come in private. Now, Katie, I know you said they don't always have to spend down all of their money, but, and forgive my ignorance, there is 
a certain amount of money if you have in the bank that you would not qualify. Am I correct about that? You are correct. So if you're a single person, um, you can only have $2,000 of countable assets. So keep in mind a house, a car, there's certain assets that are excluded. If you're married, uh, the person- Let let me interrupt you. A house and a car are excluded. Okay. I just want to make that clear to our listeners. mm -hmm. So a house and a car are exempt assets, not counted towards your 2000. Um, there's a few other assets as well that are not counted. So, um, but it's 2000 for a single person. So you got $40,000 in the bank and you know, that's not enough to sustain you for years and years in assisted living. Would you suggest that it's a great idea to contact an elder care attorney, uh, start some Medicaid planning, and that if you need and desire to be in assisted living, then start out and then you can spend down that money, that savings account on private pay in an assisted living until they qualify for Medicaid or am I misspeaking? So it's really, it's really, if, if we're, which backing up a step, I loved how you talked about uh, assisted living versus skilled nursing because I think yes. that is very important. And someone in the assisted living world told me this and I should give them credit, but I cannot remember who it was, but assisted living is like a cruise boat that doesn't go anywhere. Exactly. It really is. Yes. Oh, that was great. So I love that. versus nurse, nursing home is more your hospital like end of setting. People do live there years and years, but it's more, it's a higher level of care than your cruise boat that doesn't go anywhere. So when we're talking about Medicaid, a common misconception, um, and it's probably difficult for these guys at Hibiscus Court, is that you can go to Hibiscus Court and then you can just apply for Medicaid like you can for VA. It's not that simple. If you went to a nursing home, it's a lot easier to qualify. So if your loved one did need nursing home level care, um, it's easier to qualify. Medicaid at assisted living without going anywhere else is harder because you have to go through a waiver program to get it. So not to say that you can't get it, but I don't want to misconstrue this topic to our listeners um, that they can just it's move a into assisted living. Yeah, it's VA a is more straightforward and, and it's it's a qu- not quicker, but it's... Um, it doesn't have as many hoops and hurdles as Medicaid at assisted living does. Right, right. But I would certainly say if someone is aging, they can come to, uh, they should get with an elder law attorney because we want to do a big picture look. Obviously, we want, if they have $40,000, we want to look at their, their burn rate. How much are they going to have? How many months is this going to last them? But I want to see how are your assets titled? I don't want your, you to go to probate and your children have to probate your estate. Right. Um, I want to make sure you have a rock solid power of attorney and healthcare surrogate because as you're aging, um, you could decline. And that's going to be your most important document to help you down the road. And, and that is so important, Katie. You know, I recently went through this uh, myself with a loved one and, um, they, they developed a trust, which made things so much easier. Uh, and, and I'm grateful for that. Uh, but it's such a convoluted process. That's why I always say, if you're a senior or approaching seniorhood, uh, a great elder care attorney, you, 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 can't, uh, you can't put a value on that. And, you know, a lot of times people don't want to pay for things they don't want to pay for. You know, we, we spend money on food, entertainment. But what's more important than where you live? the treatment that you get, and then having a good elder care attorney in your corner. And when I went through this with my loved one, um, my first thought was, ooh, an elder care attorney, that's expensive. And I can't tell you, and I mean this to our listeners, I can't tell you how grateful I am that my loved one did choose to afford it because it saved me personally a ton of heartache. Um, And it saved my loved one money that they did not need to spend. Uh, and it's just such a complicated, that's why folks, we, we have a, elder care attorneys, uh, because we can't handle this on our own. It's, it's convoluted, it's complicated, and it takes time. So um, yeah, I mean, there's no easy way to qualify for Medicaid, but certainly you need a, an elder care attorney on your side. I can't stress that enough. Well, thank you so much to to you guys. Um, do you guys have any questions for one another? I just had one more thing to add. Um, a lot of people come in and they start living at an assisted living. They're enjoying it. They're having the time of their lives. They're prospering. And then funds start running out. So luckily at Hibiscus, we're not private pay only. And we do accept that Medicaid so you can continue aging in place at our assisted living. Um, we recently had a gentleman live to be 106. So I don't think everybody plans 41 years of retirement. No, not for (laughs) sure, Holly. And I'm so glad you brought that up because that is a worry for many. What if I run out of money? 
Um, I've seen that happen to people, and I can't think of anything more traumatic than getting settled in your assisted living, which is your home, running out of funds, and then being told you have to move. That, I mean, how traumatic is that? Uh, particularly if somebody has any kind of dementia process going on, that's just, uh, it, it's really devastating to someone and having to face losing their family or friends. So what I'm hearing from you is where there's a will, there's a way. And bottom line, you take care of them like family. We are family. Oh, that's so wonderful to hear. So wonderful to hear. Well, everyone, this has been uh, such a wonderful show. Um, I am so blessed and honored to be able to stand in as the host. I do have a few more things for you that I want you to hear about. Um, first of all, uh, at Helping Seniors of Brevard, I want to let you know that we have a live senior education series every month. It's at Zon Beachside the first Friday of every month and Buena Vida Estates the last Monday of every month. If you want more information on the topic or you want to RSVP, please feel free to reach out to our senior information line at 321 473 7770. And again, keep in mind our Senior Resource Center of Bavard, our 5,500 square foot uh, Senior Resource Center, where we're bringing businesses together, all geared towards helping seniors, including our own little Helping Seniors office. So you can always call our information line, but you can also stop by. I do recommend you call first because sometimes I'm out at a community event. I don't want you to show up and me not be there. Um, and would love to meet with you. And I want everybody to keep in mind uh, that we uh, keep an eye out, keep an ear open for our uh, senior resources provide uh, senior resource of Brevard grand opening. So keep that in mind. We'll have uh, we're having a few openings. One's a sort of a soft opening for the resident businesses. Uh, the other one is going to be for the public. So keep an eye out and would love you to stop by and see our space. And once again, I want to promote to you our Helping Seniors of Brevard 7th Annual Helping Seniors Car Raffle, where this year we have five choices of cars. The 2023 Kia Sportage, the 2023 Mazda Miata, the 2023 and new to us Mitsubishi Outlander, the 2023 Dodge Challenger, and the 2023 Chevy Camaro. You have a chance to win that for $25 donation or a hundred dollars for a, uh, a a group of five tickets uh, but as we always say you have to be in it to win it so thanks Brevard for your support thank you to my wonderful panelists I really appreciate you being here today and thank you to WEJF 90.3 FM <laughs>